so we can get to the fun part a little bit and talk about what's happening on a national basis. You've covered a good deal of ground in your in your comments, but let me ask you a few questions that have come from the from the audience. Uh, mostly about Donald Trump again, which seems to be uh, what we've become addicted to, but uh, some also about Hillary and, and Bernie and, and others. But let me, uh, let me start with Mr. Trump. There are some that say that he's an ignorant man, but he's not a stupid man. Uh, ignorant of facts, uh, but not stupid in the way to use media and public relations and marketing. Is he really a, a, a was it really the press intelligence that made him the candidate, or did he do it himself? I think he's a very smart man. Uh, he utilizes every marketing avenue and every marketing technique that exists. The press has never seen a candidate for national office willing, literally, every day of his life to meet, greet, be interviewed by, hang with, period. But that's Trump. And he was doing that from his position as a celebrity. I don't think he started out to be the nominee. I think he started out uh, to re-enhance himself uh, in the world of entertainment. And I think he stumbled into a measurement against 16 pros or semi-pros. And in that process, he realized that they were all minor leaguers for communicating purposes and he took full advantage of it. He would have been better prepared uh, if he had uh, been originally serious about his candidacy for the presidency. And so now I fear that he may, since I believe he is smart, I believe that he will, and I fear, that he will turn his skill set to try and to bridge that gap. I don't think he'll be able to do it quick enough, uh, frankly, because I think he is going to l want to live with his daily television dominance. No one running for any office has gotten as much free national, international media as Trump. He's probably averaged 30% of every broadcast since the first day he announced. And, and any day you ignore him, he's on top of you through Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, uh, Snapchat. He knows every use of every method by which to get attention. And many of the people in the world of journalism, and in particularly in the political side of journalism, are so uh, not interested in going out and trying to find a story. They are more comfortable having a story delivered to them. He knows that, and he delivers the story. And the more outrageous he makes it, uh, the more airtime they give him. And they are absolutely unaware that he is dealing with public, a public, previously non-participants in many cases, and they've always wanted to have somebody who sounded like them, and he is sounding like them. I, he got away with saying, you know, I, uh, I love the uneducated. I mean, <laughs> and all he got was every, you know, every guy that had a tattoo suddenly embraced him. Uh, uh, and, 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 and that's how Trump works it. And believe me, uh, he could be formidable. However, there is a column, I think, yesterday in the New York Times, uh, this economist, one of the top economists in the world, wrote this column, and it is the most telling appraisal of the inadequacies of Trump that's been done by anybody. And to the extent that the news media starts holding Trump as accountable as they hold Hillary, as accountable as they ha held Jed, as accountable as they poor Ben, as they held them all accountable. They don't bother to hold Trump accountable. They let him get away with everything. Only my, my, my friend that I appear with occasionally on Hardball uh, nailed him during the course of the primary. 
only guy that nailed him, uh, Chris Matthews, uh, nailed him on that one set. But you realize that died down so quick, he got right past that and went on, and nobody else. George Stephanopoulos was tried last Sunday over and over and over again uh, to get his attention, and he could not. And so the press needs to assume the responsibility for helping to undo the damage they've done on the body politic in America by enhancing the opportunity for Trump uh, to be persuasive. Thank you. For those of you who are part of our radio audience, you're listening to the Commonwealth Club of California's radio program. Our guest is Willie Brown, the former mayor of San Francisco and a national political commentator. I'm Joseph Fink, your moderator. Willie, uh, one, of the, uh, one, of the, one of the tactics that appears that Trump is using is the appeal to uh, the uh, class of individuals who have lost their positions because of manufacturing and that the Rust Belt states will be fair ground for him, possibly where he'll be successful in places that are traditionally democratic places like Pennsylvania and Ohio and Michigan. Do you think he's going to be successful in doing that? Well, you got to know, Joseph, in almost every presidential election, the Republican Party gets 45% of the vote. The Democratic Party gets 45% of the vote, guaranteed. The rest of the vote is where the decision is finally made. And in this case, I think Trump has set it up so that if the Democrats do it right, that component that's left out there for decision purposes will be rooted in serious issues, serious issues about inequality uh, among all of us, serious issues about uh, a quality, a legitimate quality health care delivery system. Trump is so far away on that that it's frightening, and the whole question uh, about uh, what happens uh, in the environmental world he doesn't even speak to, I think that's going to be the grounds. And I think we cannot, as Democrats, allow ourselves to be dragged into arguing with him about building a wall. You know, matter of fact, if he wins, that wall is going to be paid for by Mexico to keep us out. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, and so we ought not to get involved in that. Uh, and he's totally and completely out to lunch when he talks about or mass discrimination against somebody on the basis of religion. Or all of those things will inure to his detriment. Um, we just have to make sure we are uh, interested enough uh, in reassuring people that the nationalistic attitude that he's trying to exploit should not be rooted in isolationist isolationism, which is where he's kind of headed when he talks about all those things. He has no idea and he has no care about what he says as it relates to trade. Here is a guy that was well, he's all three of his wives or immigrants and what does he think? No woman in America can perform the task? I mean <laughs> I mean I don't I, 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 And so his level of inconsistency is uh, frightening. <laughs> and so I think that uh, dragging him into that discussion, uh, as somewhat was done in the New York Times article, uh, will expose him. But the press has got to follow dramatically uh, delivering the message. And he can't talk to enough tattoo people to overcome that. One of the ways he's been very successful during the primary season has been by insulting uh, his opponents, whomever they might, might be. He's already started that with Hillary Clinton purely by talking about Bill Clinton and his infidelities, something that happened about 25 years ago. Do you think that's going to carry water? Do you think it's going to be a successful tactic on his uh, move toward the presidency? Only if she responds to it. If she ignores it, it will not have legs. Period. Everybody knows, I mean, who doesn't know what Bill Clinton was about? 
and it's probably still about. Uh, uh, and nobody really cares, uh, frankly. That's not what we, we don't, that's not part of how we judge you anymore in America. And Trump cannot stand up as the paragon of family virtues. Uh, <laughs> clearly, he just doesn't have it. It doesn't work. And if she gets into a contest with him, uh, defending Bill Clinton, she'll be wasting her time and her energy. And she has so far ignored his comments about uh, Bill Clinton. Uh, and he has tried, uh, and it is not, I don't think, reaching with, uh, you know, 70% of the women are offended by Trump. And I believe that the attack on Bill Clinton and trying to say that somehow Hillary enabled Bill Clinton to do that. I've never heard that argument. Um, I don't understand the logic of it. How did she, you know, what is she? She's turned into a madam, and, and, and I'm making the arrangements for uh, his entertainment. Uh, that's got to be what he means when he says that she's the uh, person who's doing it, and I don't think the public will buy that, and I think he will begin to sound shrill in his own right if he keeps saying it. And besides that, uh, there are going to be enough surrogates who will attack him. I'd love to hear him get into an exchange with uh, President Clinton because I suspect that if I know Bill Clinton, he's got the information on Trump. <laughs> and I think he will expose Trump like the world exposed uh, Gary Hart. You remember when Gary Hart said, if you think I'm fooling around, follow me? <laughs> and they did. <laughs> I have never invited anybody to follow me. <laughs> Donald Trump has the uh, highest negatives of anyone ever running for the presidency, but Hillary Clinton also has very high negatives. Those of us who have involved her know her to a degree have difficulty understanding that. What, wh why does that happen? Why are her negatives so high with the national, uh, with people throughout the nation? I suspect one, she's a powerful woman. That's number one. Number two, she does not act like a woman. She acts like a power broker in every aspect of what she does. She's like one of the boys. Just, just watch how she destroyed the entire Republican caucus operation on the Benghazi hearings. She went 11 hours, and she was the only one that didn't have to go to the restroom during <laughs> any of that time period. And that's the way she is. And that pisses off a lot of people. Uh, and, uh, and, 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 and believe me, I think that's generating. And she doesn't suffer fools lightly. She's not into humor. She's not into charm. She's into none of the above. Um, but I'm telling you, she can quickly fix that if she would just at all times treat us like she's talking to her grandkid. Okay. If you were advising her, would you advise her to release the, uh, the uh, transcripts of the speeches that she gave to uh, various Wall Street firms? Absolutely. There's nothing in those speeches that would be inconsistent with good judgment uh, for Hillary. She would be discussing how you run business, how she runs business. She will be discussing and talking about everything that she's done. The issue, however, will be the selection of snippets by hostile press people and pushing her into where she would be, have to defend each of those little snippets. That you don't ever want to do. You do not want to get where your quote uh, becomes uh, the issue rather than the content of your performance. And taking excerpts from your speeches, which was always my problem, uh, you, you, you really do have it. And that's why she has not released them, uh, period. And believe me, I think she's uh, playing, playing it so that you keep asking for it, and if she unloads it, and there's nothing there, you're going to be in trouble. You notice it's not Trump screaming for her uh, speeches, period. 
because there's nothing in her speech that would be inconsistent with his business practices, etc. And you notice also that Trump hasn't said a word about his tax returns uh, because it will be proven, I think, in his tax return that he's overstating his net worth by light years. I suspect that his reasons for saying that we ought to renegotiate America's debt is because I think he's lived most of his life renegotiating his debt and taking advantage of that opportunity. And he doesn't understand you can't do that in, 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 in the U.S. government. The U.S. government's uh, full faith and credit for the dollar bill literally is the standard for the whole world. The whole world lives off of our currency stability. And believe me, we honor. Uh, you, you buy an American, uh, you buy a U.S. government generated asset or bond, you really do know that you're going to get your money. It's going to be there uh, ultimately. Trump is talking about taking a look at that and said, okay, well, you know, you bought it for a dollar, we'll give you 50 cents and you give it back. That ain't the way it works. And, and, and Trump's life is that way. And if he had to display his tax returns, I think if he has any, he would, he would, uh, he would demonstrate that. And so I don't, I don't think that that's going to ultimately be a liability and because I think that uh, it's too easy to know that she clearly hasn't said anything that anybody has gone out and reinvested in the stock market in. For a while, it looked as if we were going to have a contested Republican convention, but that's not happening now, and he's going to become the, the nominee of the party. What, in your view, is going to happen to the Republican Party? The Republican Party is ultimately going to all line up behind Trump. He's absolutely right. They have no other place to go. They have tried every avenue that they can. Uh, they have tried every insult that they can. They have uh, described him worse than any Democrat has ever described him. And invariably, he still has uh, more cachet among Republicans than any other Republican. And they're all going to fall in line, ultimately. But hopefully, uh, they will do it with less enthusiasm and make it uh, better uh, for Hillary to be able to win it. I'm just sorry that uh, uh, Cruz didn't succeed you know, in keeping the fight going. I love the fight between Cruz and, 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 <laughs> and Trump. Uh, it made... Uh, uh, it made for great theater, uh, and it made for great actions among the Republicans, and literally it had forced what used to be components of the Republican Party. They're in, they're, they don't know what they're doing now. You've got, you got the libertarian component of the Republican Party. You've got <coughs> the Tea Part of the Republican that no longer identifies themselves as the Tea Part. You've got the true conservatives. You've got the Rockefeller-type conservatives uh, that are trying to explain themselves. I want them to keep trying to explain themselves all the way through November. <laughs> one of the, uh, uh, you mentioned Ted Cruz, and one of our, the folks in the audience uh, has stated that Ted Cruz oozes insincerity, but does that mean he'll be Trump's running mate? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think Trump wants Cruz's vote. I think he grew to dislike Cruz. I don't think he disliked Lil Marco. <laughs> but I think he disliked Lion Ted. Uh, and I, you know, when he, <laughs> when and Cruz's group did what they did in the misrepresentation against Ben Carson early on, I think that really stamped Cruz as the guy Trump would always want to stomp on. And believe me, uh, he did that. And I think it became even worse when Cruz's people uh, raised uh, a, 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 a photograph of Trump's current wife, uh, not like in First Lady attire. Uh, <laughs> and and, and uh, uh, <laughs> 
at Trump. Trump was really funny about that. Trump responded, typical Trump. He took a great photograph of his wife and a photograph of Cruz's wife and says, now, which would you prefer as first lady? Uh, so he's really insulted things beyond belief. Uh, he, won't accept, he won't accept Trump. He won't accept Cruz, uh, no matter what. Uh, and I would guess that among those who were, he would never take Fiorina. Uh, he probably wouldn't touch um, that senator that's so insulting, Leslie Graham. He wouldn't accept him. Uh, I, I would guess that he's going to look around and come up with a woman. Uh, and it'll be a, a, a woman uh, governor or a woman U.S. senator on the Republican side. One of them had already said she'd jump at the chance to run with him. And I think he will do that uh, um, because I think he is smart enough to know that whomever he selects, he's going to need somebody that knows something about government. Sarah Palin's available. <laughs> Well, you know, I think he used Sarah for the one night stand that, <laughs> that he needed at that moment. I'm telling you, he's really smart. And you notice, you don't hear, you haven't seen her hanging out with him since that first little blush. Okay. Um, let, let's, let's talk a little bit about Bernie Sanders. I mean, he has attracted thousands and thousands of people and raised millions and millions of dollars without traditionally going to the large donors. Why do you think he's become such a popular person among young people? Is it just because young people are naive, or is it because of the fact that he really has something going for him? No, all the things that he says. When he says education in this country should be free for everybody, not just the poverty-stricken people, it should be free for everybody, and it should be education from or nursery school or even child care through graduate school. And we ought to pick up the tab for that. He says what Obama did in health care was not enough. We really ought to have a modification and an enhancement of Obama's system. He doesn't say how he can do it. He just tells you everything uh, that he thinks needs to be done. And he talks glowingly about how the earning capacity in America has not kept pace with the growth in the economy of this country produced by the workers and that they deserve a better piece of the action. And then he cites uh, one or two entities that are actually trying to do that to encourage uh, continuation of work and a higher performance. And so he's saying all the the things that uh, need to be said and need to be considered. Uh, he's just not a producer. He's been in the U.S. Senate for 24, 26 years, in and there is absolutely nothing that he's ever achieved in the U.S. Senate. He can't even point to a Mother's Day resolution. Uh, <laughs> but that doesn't count when it comes to with all of these potential voters when it comes to raising the appropriate issues. And I'm telling you, Hillary Clinton uh, should be mindful of those things, and she should, day she's sworn in, she should start, in some cases, pursuing some of those ideal things to improve the quality of life for all the people. And Bernie should uh, continue his advocacy, but only in Vermont. 